Hello everyone, this is Melanie from Melanie B's Creative Studio and Melanie B's Creative Supplies and I am here today and I'm very excited to bring to you the brand new Melanie B's Create and Watercolor Paint by Number Kits. And this is the tutorial on how to use these kits. A lot of you have already purchased the kits and you're just kind of sitting and waiting to see how to use them before you dive right in. I've tried to keep these kits as simplified as possible I have made sure that you did not have to mix paints or anything like that. And so I've already done a video on the components and every kit. So I'm not going to go into any of that today. I'm going to start off by showing you all the tools that I have in front of me so that we can just get right through that part and move right on to how to get started. And everything I'm going to show you is available at Melanie B's Creative Supplies with the exception of the paper towels. <laughs> you can supply those on your own. <laughs> They're kind of over here out of the way, but I will show you which ones I use because I do have a preference on paper towels because I am extra. All right, my cups have been used, you can tell. These are the new lime green and the purple that we have now. In each cup, I have the rubber scrubber that I like to use for my paintbrushes just to keep them clean. The reason I have two cups is that with watercolor, you will notice you will be changing out your water very often. So I do use two cups. I also have the accessory kit for the watercolors. I will show you what I'm using out of this kit in just a moment. I have the green parrot kit and it comes with everything you're seeing right here, which is the washi tape, the palette and the brushes and the components here as well. Underneath this, I have the silicone mat that is new at the supply shop. Um, you can see mine has been lovingly used. I even still have dried watercolor paint on here that I can activate with my spritz bottle, but I'm actually going to spray this and rinse this off I'm going to be using a different kit today, so I don't want to mix this up with the paints I'm using. So I'm going to clean that off really quickly. Now it will stain, but I have instructions on the website at Melanie B's Creative Supplies on how to get the stains off if it bothers you. So this is the palette I like to use for my watercolors when I am painting my kit. And um, you'll see me use that during the video. In addition, I also have paper towels. Now I'm going to just pull off two paper towels. I like to use Viva paper towels. And the reason I use this particular brand is because they don't have any of the weird design and they're more like a cloth. And so when I'm lifting and picking up water or paint or anything, I don't have to worry about it leaving a texture on my paint. These things will all be within reach once I get started. Now, I wanna make sure my hands are clean when I pull out the painting from my envelope. What I'm gonna to need to paint, the digital printed swatch, the photo reference, the paintable swatch, the painting itself, the reference guide, the palette, and in the palette, I have my mini paintable swatch and my paints. I'm gonna need my paint brushes and my washi tape. So the first thing I want to do before I even get near my painting, I'm gonna go ahead and protect this and move this out of the way, is that I want to take this printed version of the swatches and I want to practice creating my paints to get them as close to what I have here as possible on my paintable swatches. Now, I'm not going to do this entire thing on camera because it would take a while, but I want to show you how I create my palettes. One thing I forgot to mention as far as the tools that I'm going to be using was that I like to use a Micron size O2, and this is an archival ink pen, but it's also waterproof and it's perfect for using with watercolors. Because it does not smear or fade, it's, it's ideal for using for this particular process right here. 
So the first thing I want to do, I'm gonna write down which palette this is, and this one is the Green Parrot. And on the back of this mini swatch, I'm gonna also write Green Parrot. On your larger paintable swatch card, you're gonna see that it says paint number and color number. So your paint number is going to be here. Paint number one is going to signify this well here, and that is paint number one. Paint number two, and paint number three, number four, number, and so on, which is gonna to correspond to these openings here. So basically this is like a large palette here. And this goes all the way up to paint number 17. So in each paint opening, you're gonna see color numbers. So these colors are gonna to correspond to the numbers on your reference guide. And these are gonna be your color numbers that are gonna indicate which color you're going to use to paint with. So when we're filling out this card, we're gonna say paint number one. It actually has three colors under paint number one. So paint number one, we're gonna go ahead and do paint number one and paint number one. So one, two, three, we know that it has three colors. Those colors for this particular kit are one, two, and three. In other kits, you're going to notice they're not gonna necessarily be in order. This particular kit, the Green Parrot, was the first one I designed. And these numbers are gonna be pretty much in order because I hand numbered this entire painting. So basically I digitally hand numbered all 1500 numbers in the reference guide and so on. So these are in order more so than the rest of the kits. So that's pretty convenient, but anyway. So paint number two has three colors. So paint number two has color number four, five, and six. So I hope that makes sense as to how you're going to do this. Paint number three, because I went back and added some colors, it has number seven, number 19, and number 30. And so I'm gonna continue. Okay, so I have my palette numbered. And for the mini palette, this one gets numbered a little differently. Thin line is where you're gonna number, and the thick line is where you're going to swatch. So here, I'm gonna put one, two, and three. And this is paint number one and the numbers underneath are gonna be one, two, and three. This is paint number two, and the numbers are gonna be four, five, and six. Paint number three has seven, 19, and 30. And some of these you're gonna get a little tight because you're gonna have like five colors in that one section. Paint number four has eight and nine. If you want to, you can put the paint number in the corner so when it's time to paint these, this is when your accessory kit can come in. And I already have this Mr. Bottle. And um, you get a Mr. Bottle in your accessory kit and also masking fluid. This particular kit requires masking fluid. And you're gonna use masking fluid where it says paint zero. So that's where you're gonna use those areas blank or you're gonna put the masking fluid to preserve white space. It is easier to use the masking fluid to preserve the white space than it is to try to leave them blank because if the watercolor paint kind of seeps into those areas, it's very difficult to remove that paint. So I'll be showing you how to use the masking fluid once we get the painting ready. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of move my stuff out of the way a little bit and I'm gonna spritz my paints with water to get them ready. I always leave my palette in my little metal tin for some reason, but for video's sake, I'm just gonna take it out and move it where you guys can see it. I'm not gonna paint this entire swatch on camera, but I want to show you a couple of the different colors just to give you a really good idea of how to achieve your variations of a couple of these paints. Cause you might look at it and go, are you kidding me? So you're gonna get 49 different colors for your painting with only the 17 paints. And you're probably looking going, are you serious right now? How is that possible? But I promise you it is possible because I'm, I painted this entire kit using 17 paints. But we're going to achieve that by making tints of the original hue. And the original hue is just the 
the color itself, okay? And a tint is what you get is the lighter version of it by adding water. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna pick one like number nine here that has quite a few variations. Number nine is our paint color. And the way you know is that we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's gonna correspond with where it is here as well, okay? So that helps you find number nine. We're gonna use it pretty dark, almost to full concentrate. I'm adding a little bit more water to it. We're gonna find it here, number nine. We're gonna start with number 20, color number 20. I'm just gonna go in kind of like full concentrate. Now I've got a lot of water on my brush. If I have too much water, it's probably gonna end up lighter than it needs to be. But I'm just gonna put down a little rectangle of color. Now if I have too much water, I'm gonna tap that off over here on my paper towel and let it absorb some of that water. And then I can even come back here if I need to and lift some of that off and pull out some water there. And what's gonna happen is when I come back to my paint and I come back over here, it's gonna give me a deeper concentrate and more pigment of that color. And you see what happens. So yes, it might've been dark to begin with, but I had a lot of water. So when it dried, it might have dried a little too light. Now with watercolors, they're always gonna dry lighter than what you see when you are looking at it wet. That was something that took me a little bit to get used to. But I prefer to go in a little bit, you know, lighter to begin with and add depth later if I need to. So I'm gonna leave it like this, and that's gonna be for right now, number 20 for me. Now, instead of rinsing my brush, what I can do is I have water down in this section. I have some wet paint here that I can dip and almost go ahead, and it's gonna look dark at first, so don't panic. And I can kind of draw out my rectangle for number 21, which is my color number here. And it's gonna you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, it's too dark, it's too dark. Okay, well, don't worry, because what we can do is we can take that, dip into our water a little bit over here, and then lighten it up and move it around. This is why I say this is your, your chance to play and kind of learn a little bit about how watercolors work. So let's say I feel like that's still a little light. I can take some of that paint to my paper towel and pull it off. And then I can come back and this is lifting and I don't want it too light because I'm gonna to have to get really light down through here. But I can make this look like that. And when these dry, you're gonna see how close these are to this printed version, even though printers are never exactly the same, right? This is gonna be so close. You're gonna be like, wow, she really did get these pretty close. So I'm just gonna make it kind of smooth and even looking. I can add more if I need to, darken it up if I need to, whatever I need to do to make these look just as close as possible, okay? So I'm gonna leave it basically like that. It looks a little dark, but remember, it's gonna dry lighter. I'm gonna rinse my brush just because I wanna make sure when I get to the lighter colors, I'm starting a little bit lighter than I did here. Now, these were painted with what we call wet on dry because I took a dry paper and I painted a wet watercolor. So I have a wet paintbrush that has no color on it. And I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna make a little rectangle with water. You can't even see it. Then I'm gonna go dip into my paint here where it's a little bit liquid. And I'm gonna add, see how that's just like magical? I'm gonna add some paint. And this is a wet on wet. Now this is just a little playing here, but you see what happens. I add a little bit more water. I don't want too much, I just want a little bit. If I feel like the paint's too dark, I can tap it over here. And I'm gonna move it around and I get what looks like number 22 right here looks very close. 
and I'm happy with that. It's beautiful. All right, let's take what's on our brush, and it, it may be a little dark, it's fine. We're gonna go ahead and put a rectangle for number 23, and then I'm gonna take it to my paper towel, get a little more water, take off excess water, and pull up just a little bit so that when it dries, it's gonna give me something more like 23. And then what's left on here, I'm gonna go in with 24. 24 is pretty light. It's not quite as light as what it's got. I've got going here because that's gonna dry really light. So I can pick up a little more paint, add a little more to it, add a little more to this one actually. And then take off some of this excess color and this one will be 24. Now it's funny, all of these are in the same family, but for some reason when it printed, these almost look like they have a little more blue than those do, but they're all in the same family. So it's kind of it's kind of weird, but that's what I was talking about printers and calibrations. As long as you have these five colors looking from dark to lightest, that's what matters. You don't need to pay attention to the fact that these look more blue than those. You need to pay attention to the fact that the values are correct, okay? Which means the amount of darkness and lightness is correct. All right, so as they're drying, 21 could probably be a little lighter. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull some of that out. And this is not, you guys, an exact science. Um, you'll notice as you paint, like I said in the intro video to the kits, Everybody's is going to look different, and that's beautiful because art should all be different, right? Everybody's artwork should look different. So I think that's what's perfect about these kits. Okay, so now you can see how I got, I took one paint color, this one here, and I got five completely different looking paints from that one. That is how you're going to get your entire paint palette. And it's easy. And I did not make you mix paints to achieve this at all. And that was why I did it this way. Because I knew if I said the word mix, you guys were going to freak out. <laughs> freak out on me. <laughs> and you were going to be so mad. Okay, so let's do one more. Because I want to show you what happens if you have a paint that is actually darker when you start out. So, for example like uh, number 12 here, if I have this paint and I say, wow, that is a really dark paint, but the, the darkest one is this value here, how is this one gonna be that, you know? So this is number 12. Let's find our number 12 here, and number 34 is our color. So let's see what happens. So this is a very dark color, right? Well, we're just gonna water it down and we're gonna make it look like 34. We're not going to use it at its strongest color there. We're just going to start with it lighter. And that is going to be our darkest version of it. Look how beautiful that color is. If you guys know how meticulous I was about, <laughs> about choosing these palettes, hence the 11 months it took me. 11 months it took me to develop these kits. Oh my God, I was so OCD about this stuff. So how beautiful is that color? So let's go ahead and, and see how there's, these are very close in value. So I'm gonna go ahead and take what I have on my brush and just fill this out. And then all I'm gonna do is pick up some of this in the middle and let it just be a tint lighter. And that's it. So you'll notice in your brochure that I have included with the instructions in your kit, some of these terms that I'm using, hue, tint, shade, um, and those things, those are in there as terms because they were important to what we're doing here. And I only included terms that I thought you would be using for these projects, not for everything in watercolor. You, I'm not giving you things you don't need for these particular kits. Okay, now let's lighten these up. These are very similar. They look very close on this printed swatch. 
but they're going to be a tiny bit different. And we're going from a value that is very dark here to a value that is much lighter here. And so again, let's add a little water. I can make this the value I need it to be, basically just adding enough water to, to lighten it up. Let's do this last one by using what's on the brush, picking up some of the paint that's still left on the tip of the brush, not adding any more paint. And this is how you'll see that that paint goes a long, long way because I'm not really having to pick up a lot of paint even to change colors. I'm just using what's on the brush. And let's take a little bit away. So that's gonna dry a little bit darker, just a shade darker than that. They're very similar, but it's almost like a shipper painting kit where you get lots of similar colors, but that's what gives you the depth and dimension that you end up with in the end. Okay, so I'm gonna pull just a tiny bit more out. And there we have our number 12 that gives us color number 34, color number 35, 36, and 37, which you will see in our painting are gonna be giving us a lot of what's in this wing, which is what provides us this dimension and these feathers, okay? So that's all we're gonna do for this particular swatch here, and I will fill out the rest of this before we start to paint. And then we're gonna to go to the little mini swatch and let me show you what I do for this. It's kind of the same thing. And what I do is while I'm painting this swatch, I'm actually usually filling out this one. And that way I'm not kind of going, you know, doing all this and coming back and doing all this one. But I wanted to make sure I was clear on how to do this one before I jumped in and show you this one. So using just the number 12, I wanna make just little skinny lines. And I'm gonna dip in with the number zero brush that I've provided you with in the kit. And I'm just gonna make little small swatches, okay? Little skinny swatches. Now this is gonna be lighter, but it's okay. And then I'm gonna go back and add a little paint to darken them up and make them more similar to what I have here. And that way I have this guide and this little swatch that can go in with my paints and I can have right in front of me while I'm painting. And it's just a little quick reference for me to have handy. And you see how quick this little swatch is. You guys know, even with my regular paint by number kits, I'm all about swatching. These things will save you time. This is a great little practice to get you ready for using the watercolors. So even if you don't want to do the little mini swatch, it is fine. You know, it's like I always say, you do you boo boo. I'm not gonna say you have to do any of these things. These are just steps that will help you feel more prepared before you jump into the kit because you're only getting one paint by number. If you mess it up, that is the main component in your kit, you know, and so I can't just replace, you know, your paint by number, even though I might sell you a second painting that I might add that to the website. All right, so you can see, just made that quick little swatch here, and then this goes down after my paints have dried into my little palette and so I can have it handy and I don't have all this stuff taking up space while I'm painting. So I will complete these swatches and then we'll come back and we'll set up our painting and we will start to paint this kit. Okay, I'm back you guys and I have both swatches already completed. I'm gonna move my swatches out of the way and we're gonna go ahead and get our painting and prepare it on our surface. So what do you do if you don't have this clipboard? You can mount this down to any surface that you want. I tend to keep it on a clipboard or something just for my own personal preference. You should have very clean hands before you start to touch your painting. I'm gonna go ahead and start taping this down. The washi tape that you have received is for taping down your painting. I'm gonna move my water so I don't bump it because I don't wanna get water on this. Now, because the Parrot 
doesn't have a border on it that is specific to the painting itself, I'm not really concerned about how far in I tape it. So I'm just going to, you know, get it in here so that it can be taped with an overlapped edge. And thankfully this is tape that's easy to tear. And I will time lapse this. like to add a second little strip of the washi tape here but what I learned when I was working with a lot of water and doing a lot of blending in the colorful sunset and the covered bridge is that the more water I add the more my paper is going to want to bow up and buckle well washi tape is a really soft adhesion so it doesn't tear our paper but what we need is something that's going to really be strong and hold the paper down. So you kind of have this double-edged sword. So what I've been doing is, I don't want my frog tape, my painter's tape, to touch the paper, but I've been using it to hold down the outside edge as just a little bit of extra strength here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And this is just an optional thing. You can either double up your washi tape, which gives you a little bit of extra stability here, or you can use your frog tape if you have frog tape or painter's tape or whatever. So we have it taped down. And if you remember what I said about the green parrot painting specifically, this one has paint zero, which means we're going to need a white space in certain areas and openings. And that's where the masking fluid that I mentioned is going to come in. And masking fluid is gonna preserve the white spaces because we're not gonna be painting those white but if we leave them blank, there's a good chance that our watercolor paint might run into those open areas. So by using a little bit of masking fluid, we can protect those areas from paint of other colors getting into them. And then when we're done with our painting in that area, we can peel the masking fluid off and have a perfectly white opening. So that's what we're going to do first before we start to paint this. Now, I don't want to leave this masking fluid on there for months and then try to go peel it off. It's just a little more difficult because it's kind of embedded into the paper. So in order to know where I'm going to need the masking fluid, I would take my reference guide and ooh, look at all these numbers. Do you guys know that I digitally hand did on my computer every single number for this particular kit. This was the first kit I designed and everything was done by hand. All these numbers were typed in because I am insane. <laughs> yeah, and that is why I was happy to find some software that would help me. So this is when our little handy dandy 3D magnifying card can come in handy. So I'm gonna pull this out because even with my reading glasses on, it might be a super beneficial little thing to have. Okay, a little sticker at the bottom says, hold me two to three inches away because it really is more helpful if you hold it back a little bit than holding it close. You know, you're gonna get more magnification the further back it goes. So let's just take a look at where we're gonna see zero. And you'll notice in the eyeball, there are quite a few number zeros. So I've enlarged the eyeball because it's kind of hard to see some of these numbers here. That's a 45 in that little tiny opening right there. And there's a zero right here in the eye. And that teeny weeny little opening. Well, if it's small in this reference guide, it's gonna be even smaller here. So how are we gonna apply this masking fluid? The best way is not to pour it directly from the bottle because this is super thin, liquidy masking fluid. 
So that's why I wanted to make sure I showed it to you. So to apply the masking fluid, let me move my cup so that I can show you one of the wells here in the silicone mask. Now this is going to pour out pretty quickly and I just wanna put a tiny amount on my silicone mat. If I need more, I will get more. I'm gonna use this very pointed detail brush and this drop, this tiny little drop of masking fluid. I'm gonna fill in, I'm basically just gonna paint it into the opening. I wanna make sure it's thick enough to repel paint. And this little brush, I hope will do it. Now you wanna work with your masking fluid pretty fast because it is gonna dry and it's like rubber when it dries. So let's move on to another section. Okay, so here's a larger opening, and I'm gonna get risky here. Ah, and I'm pour a little blob there, and I'm just gonna spread it out as quickly as I can, even though I'm using a tiny brush. If I had a larger brush handy that I didn't want to really care about too much, I'd probably use it. This is a lot more than I need, but you can see it's thicker on my brush. It's getting a little rubbery. It might take a little longer for this to dry because it's thicker, uh, but I'm gonna just let it sit until it dries. Now, I think I have all of the zeros. All right, now immediately I want to rinse my brush. I mean, this brush is now going to be my masking fluid application brush. And when this dries here on my silicone mat, it's gonna peel right up. So while that's setting up, I'm gonna go ahead and start painting in the tree area where he is holding on to this branch. So the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna spritz our paints, but we are not going to spritz our paints near our painting um, and we're not gonna spritz them near our swatch. So I'm gonna take my Mr. Bottle and I'm gonna go over here away from everything else and I'm gonna get these spritzed. Now, if you don't have the Mr. Bottle, you can take your paintbrush and just add water to each cell manually. It takes a little longer. I'm not that patient, but that is one way to do it. Okay, now that I have those dampened and ready to go, I have my swatch here for a quicker reference. I have my paper towel here to blot excess paint. I have my paintbrushes ready to go. Next to me, I'm going to put my cup of fresh clean water because we're always going to start with really clean water. This is not like acrylic painting where we want to let this water just you know, get disgusting. <laughs> Y'all know, I know you because I do it too. All right, and I'm always gonna have my reference guide right beside me at all times. And I'm actually gonna leave it so that you guys can see it as well. So because everything is color coordinated as far as the painting and the reference guide, it makes it a little bit easier to find what number we need to to go into. So this very light area, which you may not even be able to see on camera. So right here on number 46, which is matching the shape and the color here on my painting, we can go into our little palette over here and see that it is this kind of light, light, creamy color. And it's going to be number 16 of our paint colors. Now, because it's a light color, what I like to do in larger cells is I'm gonna get my paintbrush with just water in it. And I'm gonna go in and just staying within the lines, I'm just gonna put water in it. And this is a wet on wet technique. And what that means is I'm applying water, so I'm making the surface wet. And I'm just kind of going around the lines a little bit, staying in the lines. And then, and this is kind of satisfying to me right here. A wet on wet technique is my favorite for the biggest lines. Now there's some smaller areas here and I'm just gonna fill those in and I can use this bigger brush for this. But anywhere, I'm tapping into my water just a little bit, add a little bit more water in there. 
anywhere that I go with my paint is going to stay in the lines. So if you remember in the flow method, it's kind of the same concept. You, wherever you put it down is where it's going to stay. So I'm going to put that down. I'm going to keep it light. And then I'm going to go in and just tap into the liquid part of my paint over here and touch it in. And remember what I said about your paint's going to dry lighter because it's watercolor. So if it's very light here, then it's going to dry really light. So I can add a little bit more. And we're just going to let it move. And it's going to move wherever I put down the water. So I'm going to let it just do its thing a little bit. And then I'm going to get a little more of that paint. And just let it fill in gently and lightly taking it into the opening for that number 46. And I can see where the lines are taking me and they're still going up in here. Now it's gonna, you're gonna see that there's a little bit of blue that's touching where 46 is. And you might be like, oh my gosh, it's gonna run into 46 a little bit and that blue might run into this. And it's fine because he's sitting on this branch, which means his body is going to kind of move into this branch. It's not like he stops and the branch starts, if you know what I mean. So it's okay. Now, but if that happens, like right there, I don't want the blue going down in here. So I'm going to clean my brush a little bit, tapping it on the, into the water, tapping it on my paper towel. And then I'm just going to come in and move the clean Number 46 around. My lights are so bright, I have to kind of look around to see if I have it where it needs to be. It's just a very flowy, relaxing painting. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more color, more pigment to this. If I go outside the lines, y'all, I don't know if you remember my saying for that, line schmines. <laughs> <laughs> They're just suggestions, okay? It's really not a big deal. I mean, I try to stay within the lines, but it, I mean, I'm not in here like a, you know, kindergartner, but I'm not really being super careful because I'm not that worried about those lines. Okay, so here, there's no line that separates 46 from 32. So do I just keep going or do I stop? 32 is going to work into 46. All right, so now I'm done with that part. If I want to go back later and add a little bit more concentrated color, I can do that, but I'm going to let it dry and see how it What looks. I can do is exactly what you would normally do in a paint my number. If I want to, I can skip to the next 46 and do basically the same thing. I can go ahead and just, you know, get some fresh water. Whoop, see how much water I got there? Okay, that's a perfect example. That's just a big blob of water. Now I can pull that water back out by just putting my brush in it and then coming to my paper towel and wiping off the excess and then take what's left and move it around. But I don't want that big puddle of water. It's better to add more water than to have that big puddle and it just kind of absorb into the paper and just buckle it up. Okay, so I'm gonna fill it in. I'm gonna go with a little bit more water. I don't want it too much, but you'll learn what is enough and what is too much. If you don't have enough water, your colors are gonna be super dark and concentrated, and you're gonna end up with what we call dry brush, which means you can see the strokes. All right, now let's go back in with 46 again. I'm gonna add some water to my palette over here with just the brush to get a very light concentrate, and then I'm gonna tap off some of the pigment on my paper towel, just so it's not too dark to start with. And we're gonna go back in and just fill in real loosely with our brush. And if I want it to be a little darker, I'm gonna add a little more. 
Now I'll tell you as you are painting, your blending is a little easier with watercolors when you do it within about 24 hours. It just, it's a lot easier to blend a section when the watercolors haven't set up too much. And so in a minute, I will come back and we'll start working in these areas and we'll start working and I'll show you how to blend. Okay, so I did all the 46s in this area. Now there is a tool that I like to use when I'm watercoloring and that is a heat tool. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like. And I'm gonna go ahead and just hit this real quick with the heat tool in order to move on in the video. And I'll share the link for this as well um, for my affiliate link on Amazon because it's not very expensive. It does get extremely hot. You don't want the heat gun to be super close to your paper. It does get anywhere from 250 to 500 degrees. There is a high and low setting. I like to use it on a low setting. I use mine for you know, rubber stamping, heat embossing, things like that. I have it for other purposes as well, but it's nice if you wanna move on from section to section, just to heat it real quickly. It will loosen your adhesive on your tape. So, you know, that's why I like to use it on the low setting, but it is a really nice tool to have if you're doing any kind of watercoloring. It's really great for all kinds of projects in your art studio. All right, so let's move on and let's start working over here where we can do some blending. My next color is gonna be number 30. And I'm gonna show you on a little bit larger scale. Let's get back our original color palettes. 30 is here and it is gonna be paint number three in our palette over here. Um, you can see it is a very light tint of number three. Let's look at the hand painted photo reference. Down in here, it's got just a little bit of green where some moss and some greenery has mixed into our branch. So that's the look we're going for. I always like to look at my photo reference a little bit just to see what is that doing there? <laughs> I know how my PBN members on my group are. They're like, why is this purple here? You know, <laughs> it's like, there's a reason, just paint, just paint, you'll love it. Okay, so here we go. Let's go in and I'm gonna kind of meld these together as I'm working. Let's go in with 30. I'm gonna do a little wet on wet here. I'm not putting down a ton of water, but I am going in with water first and taking it right up to the line where the 46 was originally. And then I'm gonna go in with this one, which looks like neon green. I'm gonna make sure I've got tons of water here in this little palette in this well with number three paint. And if I'm not sure, this is when my silicone mat comes in handy. I can take this paint and put it on my mat, add some water to it, and make sure that it is gonna be light enough so that when I add it here, that it's going to be the right tint. Now, it's still too dark, right? So what I can do here is take this brush to my paper towel and get some of that pigment off, but leave everything else here and start moving this around so that the pigment gets moved into the wet spaces and it starts to lighten up. You see how that works? And let's say it's still too dark. Let's start pulling it up. So I've got my brush and I'm just kind of pushing it and just pulling up some of the pigment. That's called lifting. Some people call it different terms. Then I'm gonna take that and just tap it onto my paper towel. And you see how it took that dark green pigment and put it on the paper towel instead of the brush. And then I can move it into the parts where I have it wet and just move it around. Now remember, it's gonna lighten up. It's gonna get lighter than this. So if it looks too bright, I'm not gonna worry if I feel like, oh, there's a little bit too dark there. Take that brush, tap it over here on my paper towel, take a little more off, tap it. And even if that's too much, again, you can always go to your water, rinse your brush, tap off the excess amount of water, and then come back in and lighten the paint by pulling it up again and tapping it off. So let's go in here and really clean our brush, get it clear. I don't want it this light, but I'm gonna do this for the video. 
and I can pull so much of this color out where it's almost non-existent. If I wanted to take all this out, I could. So let's take a ton of this out just to show you. I'm pulling it up because I can put it back. I am barely touching my paper with my brush. I'm not scrubbing anything. I'm barely gently touching and I'm actually going to leave it at that tone. I really like that tint and I know it's going to dry lighter, but while I have it wet on number 30, I'm going to take my little brush over here, my zero, and with just water, where the two colors meet, and sometimes I do this with the larger brush, but I'm gonna start kind of mixing these two colors together so that they don't have that line between them. And I'm just softly doing it. And I'm gonna come back and get water. I don't want too much water. If I get too much, I'm just gonna take it to my paper towel and tap it off. But that way, there's not that line between them. And it starts to just become an invisible barrier. And because I just painted number 46, and it's still in its kind of drying mode, even though it was dry, it's, it's not set up permanently. It just beautifully melds together and becomes one with number 30. It is so pretty. So I'm gonna do that a little bit more up here. And this is the reason I'm using the tiny brush is because I can get in this little area here and do the same thing. And if this dries and I feel like I've lost some of, let's say number 46, I can add a little more 46. And just like we do with our paint by numbers, you can always tweak or fix or whatever you want to do. But blending with this is way different than blending with acrylic paints, as you can see. So let's say it's kind of taken too much color off here with number 30. While it's wet, I can take a little bit of number 30 and kind of put it back in there. I don't want a distinctive line, but... I don't want to move the paint either, so let's just let it play. And then while I've got it, let's go back with number 46 and add a tiny bit of, oops, a little bit too much pigment. So what do we do? We're going to add some water. I'm going to see how it's moving into the number 30. If it does that, we're going to take our brush and push it back where it belongs. So get back over there where you belong. And just let it play but let it go back over here on its side. And you could, I could let it dry a little bit more and then I could do that and it would stay on its, stay on its side. So don't get too rushed like I did. If you have too much water, it's gonna start to commingle more than you want. So I'm gonna leave it alone right there and let it dry. Now this is a good time for the heat tool. You see why watercolor is so enjoyable. You talk about Zen therapy, Ooh, love it. All right, so let's hit it with a heat tool. You guys see how beautiful that is? Oh, I love it. So let's go ahead and while we're working in this area, let's do number 13. Number 13 is gonna be this color here it's going to be a tint of our number six in our palette let's take it to our silicone mat just to make sure we can get it a little bit of a tint we got too much water to start with so let's pull water out and take it to our paper towel get some of that excess water off You see how I just kind of haphazardly go in here, but I'm very light touch, very light touch. So I'm gonna add a little bit of depth to this brown. I don't want it to be so close to 46 that they look too similar. So 
So if you get a little puddle of water, you know you have too much. And so you just want to pick it back up. It's not wrong because I do it sometimes too. You can't tell how much you really have. So once in a while, you'll put your brush down and you'll go, oh, that looks like a little too much. And you just pull it right back up. But you'll, you'll learn when it looks like a little too much. And you'll know when it's not enough. So what do I do if I go a little over? Nothing. <laughs> Freak out. No, because if I look at my photo I, over here, I know that that's a darker color. In a minute, it's going to just be invisible. So I'm not worried. If it was a lighter color, it still wouldn't matter. I'd just add some water to it and lighten it up and blend it in. All right. So now that I have this color, number 13, down... Let's blend it into our other two colors that are touching it. Let's go back to our small brush with some water on it, not dripping, but some water. And we're gonna gently start moving it into number 30 here, which is our light green above us. And I just use like little circle movements. Now you'll notice I'm pulling up the pigment here and kind of putting it back where I remove it while I'm blending. So that's what you do. You just kind of move your pigment around. Get a little more water. And I use the side almost. I'm not really using it from the point. I'm using it kind of on the side to blend from one color to the next. So this is different than what watercolors would do. They would just kind of let them, you know, play together. But because this is a paint by number, we have to have a little more control. I've discovered that this is the method that works best for what we need to do. So that's the way I feel like after 10 months of playing, I wish it was playing, but <laughs> then I've realized that I feel like it works the best, so. As I said, if you find a method that works for you, continue to do it your way. So a little bit of water to soften these edges is okay because we can always go back into 13 and darken up here in the middle. But on these edges, we need to soften just by tapping and blending and lightening. That was too much water. So let's, let's pick up some of that and put it back over here on a paper towel. I really enjoy the blending on this. This is probably the first time ever that I've loved blending. <laughs> There's something satisfying about this particular kind of blending. And it might look messy at first because, you know, it's erasing some of that right there and it's like, eh. but once you perfect it, you look at it and you go, oh, it's so beautiful. For the video, I'm actually only painting a small section and blending it. So normally I would do like this whole branch and then I would start blending these sections. But for this video, I wanted to show you so the video wasn't so long, how to blend, you know, this area or whatever. So what I will do is after I finish this particular demonstration, I will paint the sections here and then I'll come back and we'll work on blending after I have done some more painting on this piece. I'm almost done with the blending on this, but let's pick up a little bit more of this green to soften this edge here because I don't want it starting to look muddy and overworked because I'm using such a light touch. But, you know, just like anything else, the more you work it, the messier it can start to look. You have to know when to stop. And that is always my issue, just like y'all. <laughs> Just like many of you, I just have to step away and say, let it, let it go. Let it go, let it go. You're welcome. You're going to sing that the rest of the day and not remember where it came from. 
And I'm gonna look over here like, what, who, me? Not me. Don't overwork it. As I'm over here, overworking it. So I'm gonna leave it like that, and it looks, you know, okay for right now. But the more I paint and work the the areas around it, the more it's gonna come together. But it's hard if you don't paint the whole thing to blend a small section and then know what it's supposed to look like. So I'm gonna stop the video here. I'm gonna paint this branch, and then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna work on how to blend into these areas. So stay tuned, I'll be back. 